Uh, first of all, I just want to state that my channel is a gaming channel and it's not about crime or anything like that. Um, so this is like the very first video about crime. Um, like I said, I, I just do games. I just play video games. Um, but I'm currently watching, uh, to be honest, right now, it's a very controversial case that's happening over in Massachusetts um, in America. And it's about a man called John O'Keefe who was a fellow police officer. So let me just go into, before we get into like the events of what happened, let's go and have a little look at exactly, just a little description about it really. So apparently on January 29th, 2022, Boston police officer John O'Keefe, born in 1975, was found dead outside a home in Canton, Massachusetts. He had been dropped off at home by his girlfriend, Karen A. Reed, born 1979 in the early hours of the morning to join a gathering hosted by fellow police officer Brian Albert. He was discovered hours later and transported to a local hospital where cause of death was listed as blunt force trauma and hypothermia. Police arrested Reed on February 1st, alleging that Reed hit her boyfriend with her SUV and left him to die in the snow. She was later indicted with second degree murder, motor vehicle manslaughter and leaving the scene of a collision. Reed has alleged that she did not hit O'Keefe and that she was framed by police. So apparently, this is a fellow police officer who, his girlfriend apparently, um, it's saying here that's Karen A. Reed who is her girlfriend and she's been indicted on second degree murder by hitting him with her vehicle and she's apparently claiming that the police has framed her. So let's have a little look at the events of that night. So on the night of January 28th, 2022, O'Keefe and Reed visited two bars in Canton, CF McCarthy's and Waterfall Bar and Grill. At the second bar, they met up with several acquaintances, including fellow police officer Brian Albert. Shortly after midnight, Albert invited a group of people, including the couple, back to his home on Fairview Road in Canton. The two drove to the home in Reed's SUV. Reed claims to have dropped O'Keefe off in front of the home and left because she was fe it wasn't feeling well. A snowstorm hit Canton in the early morning of January 29th. Um, Reed reported that when she woke up the next day, O'Keefe had not returned home after he did not respond to calls or texts. She contact uh, contacted an acquaintance from uh, that night, Jennifer McCabe, who agreed to join her and another woman, Kerry Roberts, in looking for him. The three women returned to Fairview Road in Robert's vehicle where they saw O'Keefe lying unresponsive in the snow. Reed exited the car and began CPR. McCabe called 911 at approximately 6.04am and the Canton, and, and Canton Police Fire and EMS responded to the scene. O'Keefe was transported to Good Samaritan Hospital in Brockton where he was pronounced dead. A medical examiner later reported that O'Keefe had abrasions to his right arm, several lacerations to the face, two black eyes and skull fractures, which would have contributed to brain bleeding. They determined that hypothermia was a contributing factor to O'Keefe's death. Reed theorises that O'Keefe was beaten inside the home and his body was then left outside. However, there are 11 witness statements that say O'Keefe never entered the home. So apparently, um, this um, John O'Keefe, a police officer, and his girlfriend, who is known as Karen A. Reed, um, were out basically having a drink in bars, and they essentially bumped into people they knew, the second bar that they went to, this bar called Waterfall Bar and Grill, where um, another fellow officer by the name Brian Albert essentially asked the group who was all there if they wanted to go back to his home on Fairview Road in Canton. Apparently, this Karen A. Reed drove the car and dropped John O'Keefe off and she went home because she wasn't feeling well. But the thing is, a, it says here there's 11 witnesses claiming that she didn't enter the home and he didn't enter the home. Now, the thing that confuses me a little bit about this is, let's just, 
say that she dropped this John O'Keefe at the address and decided to go home. Now, I don't actually have the times here on exactly. Um, what I do have here is it's shortly after midnight, Karen Reed, John O'Keefe and a group of friends went to the Waterfall Bar in Grill in Canton on the night of January 28th, 2022. According to prosecutors, Reed consumed several alcohol beverages. Reed drove O'Keefe to the home of Boston police officer Brian Albert. That is where police said people from the bar were meeting back up. At 1am, court documents later revealed that in the weeks before and even the hours leading up to the night out, text messages between Reed and O'Keefe as well as voicemails showed a strained relationship. Investigators said that around 1am on January 29th, Reed allegedly left O'Keefe a voicemail that said, You are a fucking loser, fuck yourself, and John, I fucking hate you. At 4.23am, 4, 4, uh, 4 while heavy snow was falling, O'Keefe's niece called Jennifer McCabe, Brian Albert's sister-in-law, and a friend of O'Keefe. She said that Reed was distraught because O'Keefe had not come home and was not answering his cell phone. According to court documents, McCabe said she heard Reed screaming, John didn't come home. We had a fight. Around 5am, Reed called another woman whose husband was friends with O'Keefe. Prosecutors alleged that Reed said while they searched, what if he's dead or what if a plough hit him? I don't remember anything from last night. We drank so much I don't remember anything. Reed McCabe and the third woman went to look for O'Keefe. Prosecutors, this is the prosecution apparently, what they're thinking happened. Um, Reed McCabe and the third woman went to look for O'Keefe. Prosecutors said Reed mentioned to the woman that she had a crack in her tail light and wondered if she could have hit him. Um, at 5.07am, a survival... Uh, a surveillance camera at O'Keefe's house shows Reed's SUV coming extremely close to uh, O'Keefe's SUV in the driveway. Prosecutors say no taillight pieces were found in the driveway. Reed's defence argues the vehicle did strike the SUV, breaking the taillight and providing an explanation for damage to the SUV. Around 6am, Reed sees O'Keefe lying in the snow outside Brian Albert's home. An emergency responder said that while hysterical and consolable, Reed repeatedly said, uh, says, I hit him, I hit him. The, the defence argues that one of the first responding officers from Canton Police gave false and deceptive testimony to the grand jury that would later indict Reed. Prosecutors and defence attorneys agree that at some point in the morning O'Keefe was killed, someone googled how long to die in cold. The sides disagree on when the cer uh, search was made. Prosecutors say the search happened at 6.23am and 6.24am after O'Keefe's body was found. The defence says a fe federal forensic expert determined the search was made at 2.23am before police were alerted that O'Keefe's body had been found. Okay, the thing that I am, it's, it's like, I'm just kind of finding hard to digest. Well, first of all, they're in a bar. There's another fellow officer. So there's quite a, there's a group of these people. There's eight or nine of these people out having a drink. Um, One's a fellow police officer who knows um, this John O'Keefe. And as you know, you're out having a drink. The, the bar shuts. It's it's normal for people to ask someone, do you want to come back to my house and we'll have more drinks? That's just, I think that's normal for everyone who, who is out having essentially a drink with, with people they know. Um, but the thing is that I'm finding hard to digest is that she's dropped him off and then she's went home. Now it's said to hear that she claims that she doesn't remember because she had so much, they had so much to drink. Anyway, she claims that they had so much to drink that she can't even remember whether she hit him or, or you know, like if it was like any sort of accident at all. But I mean, this is early in the morning, so if she's dropped him off at one a.m. and she's went back home, if you're out having a drink and you and you've had like a lot to drink. 
I don't think you're going to sleep for two or three, uh, three or four hours and randomly wake up early in the morning, be frantic, uh, frantic that that your your partner's not came home, especially when you've dropped him off at a house. I mean, I, I don't know, but if you're out at a bar and you go back to someone else's home and you wake up at what four five in the morning yeah it's like four twenty three in the morning so three hours i mean even if she wasn't sleeping and she was actually just like sitting up now that i really didn't actually get into the concept really i do apologize on essentially what happened was is this john o'keefe's um brother i think it was passed away and his his brother's significant other partner had passed away as well and he took in um essentially his brother's children brian albert's sister-in-law and a friend of o'keefe's she said reed was distraught because o'keefe had not come home and was not answering his cell phone according to court documents mccabe said she heard reed screaming john didn't come home we had a fight around 5 a.m reed called another woman whose husband was friends with O'Keefe. Prosecutors alleged that Reed said, well, they searched, what if he's dead? What if I plow, what if a plow hit him? I don't remember anything from last night. We drank so much, I don't remember anything. So that's the part I was trying to get back to there. I don't remember anything from last night. We drank so much, I don't remember anything. That's very, pretty powerful to say. I don't remember anything from last night. We drank so much. Now, current, currently when I'm watching this at the moment, um, she's people are saying that she had like a clear drink, but as, as you, there was a video shown and there was a straw inside the cup. Now, I don't know about anyone, but has, does anyone actually go to a bar and order a water? And if you do order a water... Do you get a straw with your water? Do you drink your water with a straw? I don't know anyone who does that. No one drinks water with a straw. <laughs> but yeah, apparently she does. And she's actually said here that she was she don't remember anything because she had so much to drink. So clearly she was drinking vodka. But yeah, like, the defence is claiming here that he was beaten. So he went inside, um, Karen Reed has dropped him off. He's went inside his home where there's nine people. And they have took him down to a basement and they have beaten him up and essentially dropped his body outside in their own front garden, which I think would be a very stupid thing to do. If you're going to beat someone up and you realise that they're dead and you chuck them out in the front garden, it's a bit of a silly thing to do. Also, there's like nine people there or 11 people there as well. So that's a lot of people to to actually come up with like a story just to like get over on one single woman. It's like, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Who would essentially beat someone up in their basement, take them out and then carry them out the basement and just discard them in the front garden? I, I, I don't, I don't, maybe someone can enlighten me on that. It seems like a very stupid thing to do though, doesn't it? Or even if they maybe didn't think he was dead, you, I mean, let's beat this guy up and we'll just ditch him out in the front if, um, I mean, he's a, he's a fellow police officer, so he's going to have self-defense training for starters, um, because police officers have to train for, you know, all types of kinds of people, from heavy people to just violent, aggressive people. Um, even if he was, like, overwhelmed by multiple people, like, attacking him, I think if, if he was, you know, if they thought, oh, he's not, he's not dead or anything like that, then any chance of him surviving, it wouldn't look good because they would know that he's a fellow police officer. He's going to obviously, he's going to charge them, isn't he? I mean, like, it just doesn't seem right. This, her saying that she's being framed. Um, defense attorneys Alan Jackson and David Yanetti alleged that O'Keefe was involved in a fight inside Brian Albert's home. They claim O'Keefe was beaten and his body was later dumped outside Jackson. Uh, dumped outside. Jackson and Yanetti is focused on wounds to O'Keefe's arms, which they said showed he was attacked by Albert's dog during the fight. This is not just fishing. Jackson said during the May 3rd hearing, we've got a fish on the hook. We just need the court to help us reel it in. North, uh, Norfolk assistant 
district attorney Adam Lally argued that O'Keefe never went in the house and added that there is no evidence that Mr O'Keefe was beaten and left for dead. Essentially what I'm trying to say is it doesn't make sense um, for you to beat someone up inside your home. You're a fellow police officer for starters. So you're going to know you're going to get investigated. You're going to know they're going to come to your home. Now, one thing is that when you're essentially when someone's getting beaten, there's going to be small bits of blood. If it's going to splatter around the place. You're never going to be able to clean it all. It's it's like when you ever see a boxing match and you see the slow-mo, like when you see a boxer and he punches someone, you can see like that because they pour water all over them during the rounds. You can see all those little splats of blood. It looks really cool in the pictures, but that's the exact same concept with like blood. You you would you wouldn't be able to like completely clean all that. Now I understand that they never actually searched the home or anything, apparently. Um but it just doesn't make sense that you would beat someone up in your home and then stick them out in your front garden. It just, it doesn't make sense. Also, there's like nine people or 11 people there in the home. All of them are going to sit and lie. Apparently a dog's been a part of it as well. But what is very striking is that the fact that she said these words, I don't remember anything from last night. We drank so much, I don't remember anything. That sounds like pretty, you know, I don't remember. You know, it's like it's something that like children say when they lie. You know, like you see, like they steal, like, they steal something like a cookie or they take something they're not supposed to. And you're like, did you take that? And they're like, no, I didn't take it. I didn't take it. And you know, they're lying because they get like your chocolate in the face. <laughs> That's what that comment reminds me of. I don't remember anything from last night. We drank so much. I don't remember anything. Also, she sent texts apparently saying you are a fucking loser. Fuck yourself. And John, I fucking hate you. Now, for what I've heard so far on watching the trial, the trial's still on right now. This is just a personal opinion. And I remember I watched the Alex Murdoch case. And I mean, I had a real good judgment on him, um, which was... I, th- I thought it was clear. I, I just, I don't think the defense story is, it just doesn't sound like something that anyone would do. It just sounds kind of stupid to beat someone up in your own home when there's 11 other people there. I mean, I'm not saying it's not possible. It is possible. But it just doesn't sound possible. Like, it doesn't seem like, like, you're talking about 11 people in the home who are all going to turn around and lie just to, like, attack one person. This Karen Reed, who have really haven't had anything bad to say about her. I just find it very strange. I find the case very strange, to be honest. Now, this case is very controversial and, like... Either way, apparently, like, you, people just attack it anyway, so I don't think it really matters what your opinion is, whether you think she did it or whether she didn't. I just personally think it's very strange that, I mean, so far as what I've seen on the case as well is that she apparently said, I hit him, I hit him, I hit him. Now, it's not just the two people who were apparently in the house, but also the EMS, or it was a police officer who said that when he asked what happened, she said, I hit him, I hit him, I hit him. Um, a few other people have said that um, she said a few things in that sort of context. Now, the EMS, I mean, these are people that just come out. These are people who don't have they don't their job is to basically save people and i'm pretty sure one of them said they heard that that she said that i don't know just i've seen two people cry i haven't seen anything from her at all if you're someone who's lost a spouse or someone that's lost a partner it's and especially when you're in court being accused of like essentially accidental murder she just she seems just uh, too cool calm and collected um to me personally i think she's enjoying it it's like a pantomime for her totally confident i think she'll she'll be guilty she just she's got narcissism all over her um i don't think the defense story makes much sense 
talking about someone beating someone up in a home and being attacked by an animal, then just chucked out in their own front garden. And then everyone leaves the house and they drive past and they all go about their daily business. And then all of a sudden, one of them who was in the home actually goes back to the, uh, goes back to the location with like, if you think about it from a defense point of view, one of these people in the home is witnessed or they know that a man has just been beaten up inside this, this home. He's lying out in the snow and you jump in your car with three other people, your man and two random people that they don't even know to take them home. But all of you are all in this together. And, um, yeah, you just drive past the guy, you know that he's sitting there in the snow, you go home, you get into your bed, apparently you Google or research something, like, and the effects of how long does it take to die in the cold. It's, it just it sounds silly. It sounds really silly. It, it just doesn't make sense. And then you end up um, essentially getting woke up by this Karen Reed who's screaming down a phone, hysterical. I mean, you always see this, don't you? It was the same. What, what I'm saying when I watched the Alex Murdoch case. I mean, here's this guy. He literally went home, point blank range, shotgunned his own son's face off, then went and killed his wife, goes, phones up and says, I've just came home, my wife and son's been killed, been murdered, and this guy did this for money, all because he was scamming people. Um, I don't really know what her reasons are just yet, but I'm going to go on a whim and basically say what I think actually happened without getting... Because, I mean, the case is only 11 days old, so there's so much ev evidence that still has to come out. But I'm going to go on a, a real good hunch and say that it's one of these cases where a couple... There's always a bitter one in a couple. There's always someone that ends up bitter in a relationship. They know one person hating another person for multiple reasons, whether they've cheated or whether, you know, there's always one though, it's either the male or it's the female. Um, but I think what happened is, is even though they've been lovey-dovey, I think he's want to be with someone else. And it's just a typical thing, isn't it? Like, she's been there. She's raising his kids with her. Uh, she's helping him raise the kids. She's lo looking after them. Because obviously when he was working, she was at the home. And then apparently it's like stupid arguments about she's taking them over to this Dunkin' Donuts or something. Like, buying them and treating them and stuff like that. He doesn't, he didn't like it, apparently. He said, look, stop spoiling them. Which, realistically, to be fair, I do understand, look, it seems like a nice thing, doesn't it? Like, taking kids to, like, Dunkin' Donuts and, you know, treat, treating them and stuff. But if he doesn't want her doing it, then it's because it's not her children. But I think what it is, is he didn't want to be with her anymore. She's like, wait a minute, I've been here looking after your ki uh, these kids when you've been out working. Um, I'm out here being a nice doing nice things and whatever, and here you are, like, because I think apparently he, he kissed someone. I think he, he kissed someone, and she's also kissed someone. It hasn't came out yet, but I'm pretty sure that both of them um have kissed other people. So I think that that's what it is with the relationship. But basically, the relationship wasn't going all that well. Um, and... Yeah, it's just one of those cases where heat of the moment. She could be like one of those real narcissists though. Like she's like, because she, she knew it was going to be snowing and she was going over to stay at this John O'Keefe's house knowing farewell that he was going to, like they knew it was going to be a real heavy snowfall that weekend. So, I mean, it could have been pre-planned really. Uh, it's a weird case though, to be honest, but I do, I'm, I do have the, a real hunch that, um, that she's, she's guilty. Just for the simple fact that she hasn't really showed any emotion. And she's always like kind of smiling and she's got like, I don't know, there's just something about her. I don't know if it was me and I was inside a court and someone was accusing me of killing my spouse and um, wouldn't be sitting there just all casual as if it's, you know, a day out. I really wouldn't. I would be, for starters, I'd be distraught every time I even hear their name, seeing pictures, seeing essentially the house. Um, she's 
busy sitting taking notes, she's smiling, she's Alec Murder all over again in my eyes. I, th- I do think she's guilty, it's just a personal opinion. I do know there'll be people maybe writing the comments or it, it just seems, I don't know, like, I don't know why they're thinking it's a frame up. I don't, really, really don't. You're talking about 11 people. You're talking about people that were inside that home that didn't even know who John was. They didn't even know this guy. They never knew him. They're going to sit there and just take the size of the people that are inside the house. The woman and the man who had actually took um, two young girls who were actually in the home before they, they arrived who were like in there celebrating one of the sons. They were just friends. It was like one of the son's birthdays. Um, it was his birthday. He had two friends over, two girl or two lady friends. The people that drove those two lassies home didn't even know them. They didn't even know the young lassies. Um, but they even claimed that he never came into the home. So you've got all these people who are saying that he never came into the home. You've got them, at least, you've got a police, one of the police officers that were interviewing said that she said she'd hit him. Um, you've got one of the, one of the people that were inside the home, a, a girl that went out looking with her for this John guy, she said that she, she said she hit him. Um, you've got the medical people who came out because apparently... They, they called, like, these people come out for mental health things. She was, like, having a mental health meltdown to it, like, felt an assessment to see if she was having a mental breakdown. They say that she had mentioned it. So, I mean, you've got all these random people who don't really know each other, but they're all going to conspiracy. It's all, it's all conspiracy. They're all covering things up to get this Karen Reed who has showed really zero emotion so far from what I've seen. Um, she hasn't showed any emotion. It looks like she's kind of enjoying herself. I know that sounds terrible, but she does. She doesn't seem like she's all that bothered. She's just something about her. She's just, I don't know. I don't think she's innocent. I think she's a narcissist. Uh, yeah, a narcissist. I think she's a narcissist. It's how she comes across anyway. She never looks over to like, I don't know if maybe that's like a court thing. You know, when you're in court, you're told, look, st- look straight forward and just look at the jury. Never look at family members. Never look, like, anywhere. The only time I've ever seen her looking is looking behind her to her own mother and father. Um, I've, n- I've not seen her looking, like, over at, like, the... Um, the actual family of this John O'Keefe. Um, I have never seen a one drop of tear, which is a very, very red flag. It's a red flag when you don't see that, especially when you're hearing all these, because apparently the defence is saying that, you know, this, they're this great couple, you know, they're so in love. Well, if they're so in love, why is she not gra- crying at all? Not once have I seen her cry, and I've been watching it from day one. She's never cried. I've never seen her with a tissue. The only t- the only thing I've seen, reaction-wise, is smiling. She's constantly taking notes. She's weirdly, like, whenever the our attorneys come back from, like, sidebars, she's moving the chair back, like, oh, I'll move your chair for you, and sit down, like, being all, like, super, um courteous and things. I don't know. I'm going to say, personally, from instincts, I think she's guilty. I don't, I mean, I even actually would go to as far as to say that she may, like, it's it's been, it's not, I don't think it's been pre-planned, actually. I think it's been, they've had an argument in the car. That's just my own personal opinion. I could be, I don't think I'm wrong, actually. I don't. I think she's guilty. I think it's just your your usual scenario with she's angry at the fact that he didn't want to be with her anymore or he's cheated on her. I don't think she intentionally done it. I just think it's been one of those heat of the moments. She's hit him, went back home and, you know, maybe thought I could leave him there for a day or two with, like, the snow covering him kind of thing. And I think she's just had second thoughts and she's just doing what she's doing now. But she looks completely different, completely weird um, when it comes to in the courtroom. She, Like I said, I don't see any 
tears, haven't seen any type of emotion. I mean, if you've lost a loved one or a spouse, you're going to be crying. Even if they turn around and say, look, you have to be like, do not look at the family. Well, the only people you look at is the, the witnesses in the stand. You can look at your own family and the jury. That's it. You cannot look at anyone else. You would still be, you'd still be sitting with tears in your eyes tears running down your face. You're talking about your loved one. Mating out that she's this great woman and they're in a great relationship, but she hasn't even shared shed one tear. That's just weird. But I really do think I've got a good judgment of people and I don't think she was framed at all. I don't. I know the case is very controversial. I know the comment people might write some crazy stuff in the comments. Um I won't be replying to any of them. Um you just can all say what you want in it. Um you have your own opinion. Please do. Let me know in the comment section. Um but I won't be replying to any of them. So you can easily have your say. You know, you're entitled to it. I'm not gonna stop any of the comments. You can say what you like. Um you have that right anyway, um, to do that. Um but I personally believe that she's guilty. I think she's guilty. I think it will come out she's guilty. Because like I said, the defence story it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. You're not going to beat someone up in your home and drop them outside your front garden. You're just not going to do that. I don't, especially if you're a fellow officer as well. If you're an officer, yeah, you're going to have insights and you're going to have, you're going to know how um, the investigations go. But they don't, police officers don't really know all that much, really. It's a completely different team that does all that. You know what I mean? Investigators, I'm hearing a lot like in this early on so far, it's like the police have done a terrible job. The, uh, the police officers, pl normal police officers who are local and just going around the streets, those officers, they do not do crime stuff. That's why it's separate people that come out and all the normal police officers do is clear the area and make sure no one else comes to the scene and then the actual investigators that come out the forensic investigators and stuff they come out and do all that that's you know the, the tape goes up and then they start essentially doing all the forensics at the scene. Now, obviously, police officers would be going to neighbours' homes and stuff like that, which I don't think they've done, which was which is pretty weird. Don't get me wrong, I do think that's weird. But it's a small town. I mean, it's a really small town. Like, nothing like this happens. Or This is the first time it's happened in this town. A town called Canton over in Massachusetts. Um, but it's a very, I'm pretty sure it's a very small town. It's not like, not like a city or anything like that. It's like really a small little town. So, I mean, they should have still chapped neighbours' doors and stuff. Um, I do feel they should have done that. But I just, yeah, I, I just, I don't see why you would batter someone in your home. You're a police officer, you beat someone up, and you put them out in your front garden. Because he would need to take the, the actual, he would need to take the chance that the, po the police wouldn't come and actually search his home. He'd be like, oh, so he, he would need to know so much that he's like, oh, it's okay, they'll, they'll not come to the door and come in and look around my house and, you know, do forensics and all that, you know, it's, it's in my front garden, but yeah, they'll not come in the home that's just it's too much of a chance too much of a risk um it's it sounds stupid to do as well i mean yeah it just sounds stupid especially when you, uh, you beat them up and then you just discard them in your own front garden come on it's it, it, nah this it sounds it's just far-fetched it's far-fetched stuff um you've also got like a dog that's attacked him as well an alsatian or a german she yeah german shepherd apparently i, I don't know it just sounds the defense story just sounds a bit too stupid um apparently the prosecutors have dna evidence recovered from a broken tail light and that implicates it's Reed and O'Keefe's death. They say the tail light is the same material from Reed's SUV and that the DNA matched O'Keefe's. They also said broken tail light material was found on O'Keefe's clothing. So if she had like broke her tail light when she was reversing out, which is another thing as well, there's a video of her leaving where she reverses out. Now she does hit the car, but it doesn't seem like it's hard enough to like hit the tail light. Now also as well, it's, it snows down at this part, but at this moment, it's early in the morning. I think this is when she's first leaving the home to actually go over to this lady's house to get her to like, you know, come and help her go and look for him. Um, she barely touches it. She does touch it. The car does move slightly, but she just like, I don't know, she's looking behind when she's reversing, hits the car slightly, not heavily, but 
hits it slightly, then she just okay and just carries on forward. Um, it's as if she's like thought it through. I think she's thought it through at that point, like to make up for the tail light. I think she's just been you know, they've had an argument inside the car. He's jumped out. She's absolutely fuming. She doesn't want to get in the house anymore because, you know, she's always looked good publicly with him. You know, there's because a lot of people do that as well. Not everyone sits and argues in, in front of people. And not everyone sits and, like, tells people their, their problems. They usually do it behind closed doors. It, like, that happens all the time. And he's like, look, let's just call it a day to, the, to a degree. Um, and she's went up fuming, stopped, and then came back down, maybe to talk to him again and hit him. Jumped out of the car, seen he's sitting there completely. Because like I said, now, people do strange things all the time. I think she's that's what's happened. She's had an argument, she's moved forward and then she's reversed back to maybe talk to him again in a rage, but accidentally like went reverse too fast back, like in rage. Like she's like when you drive back, you just like drive back so she can put the window down and start saying, you fucking, you, 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 give him a rant and then fly off again. I think when she's reversed back though, she's actually, because she's had some drinks, that she's not not calculated on reverse speed and she's came back and she's actually happened. It's, it's She's came out and she's realised that he's, that he's sitting there, may slightly, like... But then you think, well, why did she not phone an ambulance? It's one of those ones. It's weird, isn't it? But I don't think she's innocent, for sure. I think she done it. I don't think these people have conspired to, um, to essentially set her up. It just, this it sounds stupid. Um, there's one guy as well, I actually didn't mention it. Um, a young boy called Colin Albert. Um, yeah, he had, like, some sort of, I mean, if I can find a picture, I'll put the picture up right now. He's got, like, a, like, his, his hand, his knuckles look, like, done in, and apparently he said that he'd, like, slipped on a driveway. I kind of still don't buy that. I don't, I don't buy the fact as well that you've got this 17-year-old boy who's essentially beat a, a fellow police officer to a pulp. Um, I just, I don't believe that neither. And it's, it's just that there's so, it's just too many people. Even, like, the, the medical people that came out to, like, do a check, a mental health check on this car and read, even they stated that she'd claimed these things. I hit him. Um, then, like, one minute she was hysterical, next minute she was calm. Then she's back to being hysterical again. Again, as if it was like a show. She just gives me Alex Murdo. She gives me she gives me the vibes of him. Maybe she didn't mean to do it. Or then again, maybe she did. But it's most likely just been one of those out of character moments where she's just fuming, absolutely outraged, you know, with emotions. She even did a TV interview as well. The one thing you notice that with um, narcissists, they love to be like on television. They love to be on television. Yeah, just like, I don't know. I think she's a narcissist. I really do. I think she's one of those ones. I think she thinks she's clever than everyone. And I think that because they've never really had any arguments in front of anyone, that she's pretty much in the clear. Because like I said, nah, we haven't had like autopsies and um, we haven't had any of that stuff. All we've really had is just the people inside the home. That's all we've had so far. I probably will actually do another video on it. Yeah, that's just what I'm thinking so far. I, I genuinely believe that she um, guilty. Just the way she's acting and the way she she's um, and the way the defense story is about some like he's got dropped off. He's went into the house. He's had an argument. He's been attacked by a dog as well. These dudes are beating him to a pulp. And um, yeah, people in the house just don't know. They're not the wiser. Um, and if they are the wiser, they're all lying. Um, the EMS, the medical people who came out to do a, a mental health assessment on her and in, in the back of an ambulance, they're on it, they would have to be because they said that she said it as well, that she'd hit him. So there's so many people, say, like there's three or four people now said that she said uh, that she had mentioned that she'd hit them. A police officer, the woman that was with her who found the body, who was actually in the house, who was texting at the time, like, where are you? There was a, a, a guy inside the house who, who also said that he was like, what are you doing? Like, why are they still sitting out there? You know, because they were probably arguing in the camp. Uh, that's why they were still sitting there. And then, like I said, a heated moment. She's went and I probably accidentally drove back too fast. And him. And instead of calling for help in that, she just jumped straight back in the car. She's drove home. She's 
been sitting there and then she's like, do you know what? I can't just leave him there. I'll have to go back. And then when she's, you know, she's made up this whole weird story of without drinking, I dropped him off and I went home because I didn't feel well and he never came home. And uh, I went out looking for him in the morning. It just, it doesn't make sense. I'm sorry. But it doesn't. It really doesn't. Um, and you're talking about 11 people conspiring, the police, the fire engine, the ambulance, the medical people that came out to do mental health assessment on her. They're lying, they're in on it. Um, they've conspired to plan evidence on all just for this woman this Karen Reed just for her they're all desperate to get her in jail to cover themselves or to cover some 17 year old boy it's so stupid it makes no sense whatsoever like I said you're not going to beat some, someone up in your home and then drop them out in your front garden and then blame, blame their girlfriend it's just just too many people who would like flop that for you there's people in the home that didn't even actually know the people that were in like actually know like not everyone knows everyone in the home there's at least two young girls that didn't even know some of the people in the home especially the ones that actually get offered them a lift home like they even said that he never en entered the home so according to the defense he was took into the basement well the people in there said that no one left the home oh but they're conspiring but like I said, there's two young girls that were actually in the home before any of those people came home. Why would they just randomly start defending these people? It just doesn't make sense at all, you know? They're in the home as well, they've got the music on, so they're not going to hear anything outside. It's early in the morning, do you know? It's early in the morning. It's starting to snow. I mean, no one neighbour-wise even came out of their homes at all. They never even came out, they never came out of their home. They all slept through it. Every one of them. Mind you, they never had sirens on and things like that. But you always like, get that where you see like the nosy neighbours. There's always usually a nosy neighbour, isn't there? Someone looking out the window or opening the door like, but there was like nobody. So I guess the whole street's in on it as well if you think about it. They're like oh wait a minute, this is a, this is a police officer's home. Let's uh, not go outside and you know, like we're, we're all sleeping. It is early in the morning though, it's 6 o'clock in the morning. Most people are in their bed and if there isn't actually sirens going off there's nothing going to wake you up because you don't see when you sleep so the lights can be flashing through the windows all day long if you're sleeping and there's no sound but the lights are flashing you're still sleeping it's not going to get you up it's six in the morning as well i'm, I'm going to go on real punch so I don't think I'm wrong, but I think she's a narcissist. I don't think these people are conspiring. I don't see any reason why these people would lie. I really don't. She looks like she's having the time of her life. There's nothing here. Yeah, there's just there's just nothing here to, that's like showing why these people would want to like lie and go and 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 conspire like just like go against her to like. I just I don't. Know, it seems weird to me. The story, like I said, beating someone up in your home and you're a police officer and you're just going to stick him out in your front garden is the most stupidest thing you can ever do. Um, knowing fine well that there's actually people in your home at the time when you're doing it. You're going to rely on them to actually lie for you. That You're talking about someone being murdered. You're going to have 9-11 people sit there and lie for you knowing that some man has died and not one of them is going to turn around and say, Guess what? I was in the home and I kind of feel bad, but yeah, he actually took him into the basement, battered him, and chucked him out in the front garden. I was there, I seen it, I witnessed it, but instead they're like, no, he never came in. He never came in the home. I mean, we seen the car out front, but he never came, um, no, he never came in. But then you've got like this woman who's running around frantic, screaming and bawling, claiming to several people that she hit him, then saying the same repetitive thing, could I have hit him, did I hit him? him like it's the same repetitive thing so that's why i'm thinking that she's been drinking vodka because she says she can't remember the night she had too much to drink so she's even just stated there i don't know if i am or no it might have happened under the alcohol under the influence of alcohol she's came back accidentally hit him seen him there been like oh no what do i do jumped in the motor drove home and sat and went wait a minute i need to think of something here i need to think of something up like there'll be there's there's going to 
going to be more to it. It hasn't fully come out yet. Um, but that's just my early opinion on the case. Like I said, it's very controversial as well. There'll be people going crazy, people saying you don't know what you're talking about, a lot of stupid stuff. But yeah, let me know your uh, opinions down in the comment section. Like I said, I won't be replying to any of them. But yeah, write your opinion in whether it's, you know, she's innocent, she's guilty. It's just personal opinions. We all have them. We all get to share them. We all get to, yeah, just, just give our own basic personal what what you see um and what what you actually think if you digest in the information that you have on the case if you don't have any information on the case like i said i didn't go into, into too much detail i'm a gaming channel i play video games enjoy playing video games peace